Hey, what's up guys? Chief Pad here and today bringing you guys a brand new Clash Royale video and today we're going to be bringing back one of my favorite decks inside of Clash Royale, which is going to be the Golem 3 Musketeer decks, which is one of the more expensive cards to ever enter the meta. Now, it's a little bit different than how you guys might have seen it previously. We've got Barbarians inside of there, Goblins. We actually don't have any defensive structures except for the Elixir Collector, which you wouldn't really qualify as a defense anyways. It only really qualifies as a building. Uh, but taking a look at this very first battle today, we're going to be playing against Krista who's using the P.E.K.K.A deck. Now this is going to be interesting to play against our Golem. Technically the P.E.K.K.A counters the Golem. Um, whenever you play them at the same time the P.E.K.K.A usually winner or P.E.K.K.A user usually ends up on top uh, but so far he's going to play an Ice Wizard to help out his P.E.K.K.A. I'm going to drop some Barbarians as well and my Musketeers are going to go relatively unchecked down the left hand lane until he drops that Baby Dragon to uh, stop that push. Now Goblins to help out my Musketeer mean that we shouldn't end up losing um, too much on the left hand side. In fact, we're not going to take any damage whatsoever. And at this point, we're just making some pretty good profit from our Elixir Collector in the very center. He's going to go ahead and drop his Elixir Collector in the center. Or maybe it's a girl since it's Christy. And this is where we can start making some real leeway with our push. Now we've got the three Musketeers coming up next which means all we have to do is cycle through our Ice Spirit and our three Musketeers are going to run straight onto the battlefield. Now, I don't know what Christie's going to play, maybe a P.E.K.K.A., but there goes the three Musketeers right here. I'm dropping them split just in case uh, they end up having a Fireball, but seeing as Christie's not playing anything, I'm imagining these Musketeers are going to run through unfazed. Now, Barbarians are going to go down as well to provide some backup. The tower's already dead and the Baby Dragon's going to be taken out as well. This ended up being a pretty magnificent push for us and uh, the arrows are going to attack absolutely everything and end up cleaning up that princess as well. So I couldn't ask for a very better start to this game. We've taken the main tower down, the right hand side's down to 1,554, just from some of those stray musketeers that I split um, during those three musketeer pushes. So hopefully we can actually end up not taking any damage on any of our towers and have a flawless victory for this game, uh, which would end up being pretty epic. Now, Elixir Collectors again for both of us. Let's go ahead and set up our Golem on the right-hand side. It looks like Christie's going to play the P.E.K.K.A., so we're going to have to play a little bit of defense if we're going to want to maintain that uh, perfect record. All right, so Goblin's right on top of the Ice Wizard. Here comes the Hog Rider. This is going to be really tough to deal with. Let's play our Ice uh, Spirit right now, as well as our Arrows for that uh, Princess. That looks like we actually did end up taking damage onto our Tower. I think that was from maybe the... Um, the princess so at this point you don't really care about having a perfect game three musketeers plus the golem on the right hand side barbarians are going to be coming out as well and uh, that's going to do it at this point christy knows it's over and uh, there's nothing that they can do to stop this push the peck is going to do its best pretty much nothing the golem and the three musketeers are going to take that tower down and uh, give us a pretty demanding or comprehensive three crown to zero victory i didn't really suffer any damage until that one princess shot and then i let uh, Christy just takes some damage on my left hand tower. So very well played 24 trophies Let's go ahead and continue against Isa from glory makers and uh, see if we can knock one out of the park All right, so elixir collector is gonna go down for both of us I placed mine on the opposite side You always want to place your elixir collector on the opposite side of your opponent in the very beginning Just so you can attack down their lane and not have to worry about them fireball Like let's say I drop my three musketeers on the bottom left hand side right now. He could fireball those down, uh, plus my Elixir Collector down if it was over there. Um, I don't know, I'll explain it more in a video. Hopefully that made somewhat of sense, but you don't wanna, in the very beginning, you do not wanna play your Elixir Collector on the same side you're deploying your troops because it just gives you them an opportunity to uh, use a Fireball or a Poison Spell to take all of your hard-earned troops out and uh, that's never really what you want. Now, starting off the beginning of this battle, things aren't going too hot. My goblins are focusing on the giant, which is 100% my fault. I did not play that very well at all. I'm just going to actually end up losing this right-hand tower. There's nothing I can do about it, just due to those misplays I made towards the very beginning. In fact, his mini P.E.K.K.A. and giant are going to get pretty close to my elixir collector, so I'm going to end up saving that uh, because I would have given up a pretty decent amount of profit um, if that was the case. Now, Ice Spirit's going to do its best. That was honestly a really poor Ice Spirit. I was sort of just desperate to get some sort of return for that investment I made down the left-hand lane. I wasn't able to follow up my Golem with anything except for a set of arrows, and uh, because of that, we definitely paid the price, and at this point, let's just go ahead and kill this Musketeer with the Goblins, get ready to go for another push down the left-hand lane, and at this point, it's inevitable that we do have to drop our Golem on the left-hand side of the map. Now, I haven't seen a Fireball just yet, and I have dropped my Barbarians, so I would assume that they would have come out by now. 
uh, if Isa had them. So we do have that three musketeer set up our sleeve in case that can be what turns the match. Let's go ahead and play our golem as soon as we're about to pump to make sure we get the maximum amount of time to build up our troops. And uh, Isa is going to do the same exact thing with a giant on the right hand side. So rather than play defense, looks like he's going to go aggressively with a giant on the right hand lane. I'm going to get ready for one of my cannons to see what they're going to do. Let's drop the cannon right now. And he's actually going to drop a musketeer as well. So at this point, Isa is going all in and saying, hey, I don't care what happens. You can play whatever you want. So guess what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play my Barbarians. I'm going to play my three Musketeers. Since Ice is just going for this three crown victory, which I don't understand whatsoever, we can play some defense with our Goblins, our Musketeers, our Arrows. We're just killing everything we absolutely can. And by the time things are over, take a look at his Crown Tower. Here is King Tower. His King Tower is getting absolutely blasted by our Barbarians. My Barbarians are killing his Musketeer as well as his Guards. My Golem is still going ham on that tower right now. And the damage that he's getting really isn't doing too much. In fact, I don't care about his push on my King Tower. I'm dropping my three Musketeers, and before you can say, uh, I don't even know what you can say. Chef Pad, the match is over, guys. Three crowns to one. He neglected that left-hand lane. He tried to go for the three crown win, and that gave me a pretty easy opening to steal the battle after playing a nice defensive stop to his, uh, his counter push. Now another battle, we've got two three crowns in a row, let's try to make it three. We're playing nothing to lose from Arab Alliance. Let's go ahead and drop our elixir collector in the bottom right. And uh, getting ready for his push, I've got the cannon in my hand in case a hog rider comes out, a giant comes out, a royal GG comes out, but no, he's got an elixir collector instead. So interesting card. Let's play our golem to start up another push down the right hand lane. And uh, one card that I don't play, mind playing next to my Elixir Collector is the Golem, just because it already has so much HP. It doesn't really matter if it gets fireballed. So a Golem's gonna go down. We've got a couple of weird cards inside of our hand as well. And just like that last battle, I'm gonna cycle to my, my three Musketeers. So let's play um, that Fire, or that Ice Spirit. Let's play those three Musketeers. And guess what? Since he already played that Poison Spell, I know he doesn't have one right now, which would be his one counter to those three Musketeers. No Poison Spell means he has to play some Guards, he has to play Zap. Those aren't gonna be effective at all. And now my Musketeers are gonna go crazy on that right-hand tower and a take down the very first tower of the game. Now the bomber killed two of my musketeers, which is a little unfortunate. We would have been able to blast that tower down pretty low, uh, the king tower that is, but instead one musketeer is gonna do work and bring it down to the 3000s, which really isn't too shabby. Another elixir collector for us on the bottom right is gonna be met by one for him on the top left. And uh, we're in definite cruise control right now. Besides a single hit on our bottom right hand tower, this game is absolutely flawless. And uh, this is why it's one of my favorite decks. It's just such an explosive deck. The game can change at any time with the three musketeers dropped in the very center of their base or whenever they play their poison spell, just like this guy ended up doing. So uh, let's go ahead and get ready. Keep in mind, I do now know that he has a poison spell inside of his deck, so I've gotta be careful for my barbarians and my three musketeers. I'm gonna drop my barbarians right now, assuming that the poison spell is gonna be coming out, but I do have the three musketeers in my hand and I'm not afraid to play them. So let's play them in the very center. Let's do it. Let's drop them in the very center. They're gonna start going to work on his musketeers, on his bomber, on his mini P.E.K.K.A., on his tower. The zap spell is going to actually end up doing a massive amount of work, but still, tower's going to go down in the left-hand lane. The barbarians cleaned up that giant, and he didn't even play his poison spell, guys. That was his one counter to the three musketeers and to my barbarians, but they ended up not being used at all. Instead, he tried to use his zap as well as his guards, and uh, taking a look at the map, you can see that obviously was not the answer and that this game is definitely in our hands by now. So really just a question of when we can go for that third crown. I'll use my goblins on the musketeer and they're gonna get zapped or else they would have turned around and killed that giant. I'm sort of tempted to let that giant beat down my tower, but uh, I'm not gonna let that happen. Instead, my barbarians are gonna be able to clean that giant up. And now with a big push going down the left-hand lane, I'm just gonna drop my three musketeers because you guys know me. I wanna end this battle as quickly as possible. Ice Spirit onto the guards. One musketeer is still going crazy onto that one right there, but with 12 seconds left, I feel like we're not gonna have enough time to get the job done. This would have been our third three crown in a row, but instead, nothing to lose does not wanna lose his, uh, his third crown and his king tower right there. The two golems locking on, getting ready to finish it off. But 10 seconds would have been enough, but that's gonna be it for the game. And a good game played against nothing to lose. So three and oh with this deck so far. Let's play one more battle with this deck. And uh, we're gonna be going against Tyler Durden to see if we can wrap up a perfect four and zero day. Now I've got, 
a lot of strange cards inside of my deck. It's going to cost at least five elixir no matter what I play, so I opt for the three musketeers. Definitely not the greatest feeling because you just feel so naked when you play all of that elixir on one side of the map. He's got his musketeers running down the... or his minions. Those minions are going to die because he played his, uh, his minor way too late. I'm dropping barbarians, assuming there's no poison spell. He's going to drop his barbarians instead, and uh, the fire spirits are actually going to be a really good play and make it so he doesn't take... Uh, too much more damage from those barbarians now still goblins are gonna die to my goblins i've got the arrows in my hand but i'm gonna hold on to those i don't mind letting my goblins tank those minions you saw that i'm only gonna take maybe one or two hits from this minion right here that was really nice uh, to save our arrows and not not use that three elixir so instead we get an elixir pump down and uh, we can get ready to place our very first golem of the game and put ourselves onto the map now his princess should be a little bit annoying i don't want to leave the princess unchecked so I'm going to hold my arrows in my hand, hoping that he might play something. So I predicted for some minions or some goblins, but unfortunately it was a big fat royal giant. Cannon's going to be able to stop it in its tracks. And rather than play my barbarians immediately, I'm going to let the fire spirits run down the lane. Only one of them will attack my barbarians, which really isn't too big of a deal. And uh, now my goblins can clean up this miner. All right, so instead of doing a golem three musketeers push, we've got an insane minion ice spirit goblins push. Definitely not the, uh, the most, you know... I don't know, the most obvious push inside of the entire game, but still, tower's down to 1,050. And then now that we're cranking into double OT, we still need to show this guy the power of our golem. So hopefully that can be one of the next cards that we play if we get enough elixir to eventually play it. All right, so elixir's pumps are going to go ahead and pump. We've got the golem in the very back. We're about to enter double elixir, which is really good for us in this deck. We're going to receive a huge buff after that happens. And uh, now I've got the barbarians in my hand just for that royal GG. I'm actually going to, yeah, let's save the cannon and play the barbarians instead. Um, and now we're going to get ready with everything we have down the right hand lane as soon as we can stop his little push. He's trying to be cute with this push right here. I'm going to arrow down his minions and his princess. His zap spell is going to do nothing. We've got the three musketeers out, and uh, that's right. Goblins are going to die. It's beautiful watching the three goblins die from the three musketeers. Just like that, tower one is down. Tower two is down. Alert, alert, mayday, mayday. This is good game. Well played. Golem, three musketeers, barbarians, ice spirits, and goblins onto the tower. Arrows onto my king tower. Good game. Well played. That is going to do it for this battle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. It is one of my favorite decks, guys. I definitely recommend that you try it out at least once if you have these cards, even if they're underleveled. I guess it's frustrating because you can get fireballed out and your three musketeers die immediately if your cards are underleveled, um, but try it out inside of a tournament, try it out inside of something else. Uh, but that is going to do it for this video and one of my favorite decks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see some more Three Musketeers deck, give me some uh, give me some suggestions in the comment section below. But uh, that is going to do it. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace out.